I okay. still haven't got my head around it. It was a week ago and I'm still, you know, I can't sleep, I can't eat. Um, I still can't get my head around why we're not allowed to take our boy um, for treatment that he so desperately needs. You know? And just to get be clear, Chris, you've raised money, you have funds, you could pay for the transportation to the United States, yeah? And you're prepared to do that. Yeah. The reason that the, that the judges decided that that should not be the case is that the medical opinion is that this would be too stressful and, and, and too painful for your son. Is that right? But that's what they're saying. That's not, we totally disagree with that. Um, he's probably the most kind of stable baby in there. Mm -hmm. um, he's not in pain. He's not suffering because if he was suffering and he was in pain, we wouldn't sit by his bed and watch him suffer. So um, the harshness of all of this is partly that you're not asking for anyone else to pay for this, mm. right? So you're just being denied the physical transportation. Yeah. Yeah. And we were told that we could go, and he hasn't deteriorated in that time. So it's very, very hard for us to get our heads around. Of course. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Why, um, why do you think, Chris, that they, the judge made that decision on that day? Just, I don't, I don't know. I suppose the evidence he was given, it seems like they're, they're making him out to be a lot worse than he actually is. Um, as I say, we... We sit there with him day in, day out. We, we know he's not in pain and he's not suffering. Um, and he just needs the treatment that's going to potentially help him, you know? Um, people well, that have been following this, uh, there was talk that, that the, the doctor in America, the specialist in America who had said that he, they had this new treatment, has now slightly retracted on that and saying he hadn't realised when he offered that that Charlie was quite as sick as he now understands him to be and that even he maybe thinks that this treatment isn't going to help him. Where are you with that? Is that, is that the case? As he said now, mm, actually, maybe this wouldn't be the best thing for Charlie. I think you'd only know if you were at the whole hearing uh, the other things he said as well, the positive things he said that could happen. There's no guarantee it will work, but theoretically it would help, it should help. But. Um, I'm just looking at the reaction coming in as we're speaking to you um, today. Uh, Jane says, sometimes it takes someone who's not emotionally involved to make the toughest yet kindest decision, that's how she put it. Julie says, my daughter died at two days old and I was devastated, but I eventually saw it as a blessing because her quality of life would have been appalling. It is difficult to let go, but sometimes you have to do what is best for others, not yourself how would you answer that but it's no one knows what his quality of life would be you know it, this could everyone's kind of so negative saying he won't have a quality of life but it could it could perform wonders you know every child with a similar gene who is on this medication i believe there's 18 around the world they are all still alive and they are all still getting stronger so i don't see how we can know this and then just go, do you know what, no, just, just let him go, you know, because they're all alive, they're all getting stronger. Um, and, and Charlie deserves that chance. All we're asking for is two months to try this medication. And, you know, we've been here for months trying to get this anyway. And he hasn't deteriorated in that time. And we will know if it works or not in that time. So... Well, Great Ormond Street say to you, they're, they're very empathetic, they're very sympathetic, they talk about the distress that you're going through. And they say they, they looked at this, uh, they looked at multiple external options as to whether this therapy could improve Charlie's chance of survival or his quality of life. And they say the consensus was that it would not. And they say to you, our focus is now to work with Charlie's family to plan for the next stages in Charlie's care. What would you say to them? Well, part of the reason they didn't want to go ahead with the treatment is because they said it wasn't fair on Charlie to leave him on a ventilator for three months with a treatment that may not work. But instead, he's been left on a ventilator for four months with nothing. So they could have tried this. It's not a harmful medicine. It's not, it hasn't got side effects. It, it can only, you know, it, either it won't work or it starts to work. It's not gonna, it's not like three months where he's gonna really suffer and at the end of it, there may be, you know, some light at the end of the tunnel. It's, it's, it's three months and, we'll know at the end of it, it works. 
Connie yeah. and Chris, our, our hearts break for you, and um, uh, that's reflective of thousands of people out there as well who want to offer you their support and their prayers as well. As you say, you're going to appeal. When is that likely to happen? I don't know. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But you're going to fight all the way. Of course, all the way. Yeah. Well, I'm sure thank we'll talk to you again then in that process. And thank you for taking the time to come in today. And I love to Charlie mm. as well.